Hello there, this is Miss Nakayama and today's lesson is T.1 using trigonometric identities. So one of my most favorite things to do, we don't actually get to verify them this year. They save that for next year, which is a bummer, but we will be simplifying them. And I like it a lot because I think it's like putting the pieces of a puzzle together. Um, you do not have to use a calculator to do this. So, um, but what is most important is that you know these identities. Um, there are, um, I have a sheet of all of these identities that I will give to you the next time I see you. Um, it's also will be available to print from Schoology because these identities are also so important that it's part of the test. Um, we have a test on them. When you take the test on this chapter, um, the day before you will take a test on all of these identities. And then when you actually take the test, I will give you the sheet of the identities, but it's a big part of your grade. We'll talk about it more next time I see you, but I'd want you to know how important they are. So um, you see this picture of a hexagon. So what this is, is a way to help you remember these identities. So um, these you already know, hopefully you already knew them and it was no trouble in all eight of these. Okay. But um, I'm going to talk to you about the hexagon because it really puts things in order and helps you remember what they are. So if you have a, have a hexagon and you draw the diagonals of the hexagon and put a one in the center of that hexagon, and then I'm going to go through and start. You always start at the left side and I'm going to write tangent. And y'all already know that tangent is sine over cosine. And then across from the tangent is its reciprocal, which is the cotangent. And then all of the C's are on the same side. So that means that this is cosecant and the only one left is secant. So this is how you set up your hexagon. And so all the really cool things that happen with it is if you look at it, first off, actually I should have said this before, but um, all of these reciprocal identities, one of the things that I add to it is that it is true if all of the exponents are squared. So when you see sine of theta equals one over cosecant theta, if this sine is squared, then that cosecant has to be, will be squared also, and then it would be true. So if these are both squared or these are both cubed, then these reciprocal identities hold true, okay? In our hexagon, all right, if you notice how it's set up, diagonally, you see reciprocals. So tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Cosine and secant are reciprocals. And what does that really mean? Okay, remember is that if I go diagonally, okay, I can't do this very well, but anyway, this, this times this is equal to one. Cosine times secant is equal to one. Tangent times cotangent is equal to one. So keep that in mind when you're looking at it. The quotient identities, when you look at your hexagon, all right, they are clockwise starting here. Tangent equals sine divided by cosine. Cotangent equals cosecant, oh, no, actually, excuse me, clockwise starting with tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. And really, the reason I kept going is because, and I'll put the link, if anybody wants the link to give more details of this hexagon, I'll be happy to show it to you because it does give you a lot more information than I'm going to talk about today because that would be longer. Okay, so those identities you know, this again is helping you remember it. Now, I want to go quickly back to the warm-up. Y'all had to do this in your warm-up. And what I would have talked about if, if I was there is reminding you of the unit circle. And what is the equation that represents the unit circle? It is x squared plus y squared is equal to one. That's the equation for our unit circle. Now, what is x on the unit circle? x represents what trig function? Well, x represents the cosine of theta. Well, if I square it, I would have to write it like that which is a lot more work. So what we usually do when we write it, we don't put the parentheses and we put the square there to know that the trig function is squared, but theta is not. 
So then y is equal to sine. So I'm going to have sine squared theta equals 1. Okay. So we get this identity, which is super important. It is called the Pythagorean identity. That's what these are right here. And again, if you take this particular one, if you take the sine squared and you divide every term in here, divide by cosine squared, you divide by cosine, sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. So that's where that one comes from. Okay. And if I divided each of these number 9, each of them in number 9 by the sine squared theta, then sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. Cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotangent squared. And 1 divided by sine squared is cosecant squared. So when you get your sheet, you're going to have other forms of these. You only have to know one of each one. And I prefer the plus, but it does not matter. If I were to rearrange this, okay, such that I wanted to get sine by itself, then I would subtract. Sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. That's still a Pythagorean identity. It's just a rearrangement of this guy right here. And if I wanted to get cosine squared by itself, it would look like that. Okay. Tangent squared plus 1. All right, if I want tangent squared by itself, then it's secant squared minus 1. If I want 1 by itself, secant squared minus tangent squared equals 1. Okay, and then lastly, cotangent squared by itself would look like that. If I subtract the 1, if I subtract, uh, if I want to get 1 by itself, they just write it cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals 1. All right, so in our hexagon, okay, these show up, this is kind of cool, okay? Um, these show up in your hexagon if you, <clears throat> actually, let me tell you that, that first, sorry. <clears throat> this is only true for squares, y'all. This is squared. It is not true if you say sine plus cosine does not equal one. You can look at your unit circle and see that's not true. But this is just the Pythagorean theorem from our unit circle. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you're going to hear me when we go through this. <clears throat> oh, sorry. When you're going through this and you ever have something that's got a squared with a plus or a minus in it, I'm going to start going ding, 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 because you need to think this is the category I need to look at. Okay. Now, let me show you how this ties in on our um, hexagon, on our super hexagon. So if you start at the top here, and actually um, remember, I'm going to do that again just to help you remember. We start with tangent, tangent is sine divided by cosine. Reciprocal of the tangent is the cotangent. All the c's are together. And then what's left is the secant. And then you have your one in the middle. And if you color these three and think about always going in clockwise, starting at the top left of each of these triangles, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Then I go to this one. 1 squared plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. That's number 11. Go to this colored one. Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So you've got the Pythagorean identities right there. Some people also like to remember this one as I tan by the C. So they remember that one. And I cotan by the cosecant, whatever. That's just another thing I've heard people say. But I kind of like this super hexagon and it's Help my people remember it. Okay, co-function identities. In this group, y'all, co-function is because the angles are complementary. If you think of the first two words of complementary, that, uh, I mean, the first two, first two letters of the word complementary, it's CO. So co-functions are complementary angles. So if you have theta and pi over 2, which is 90 degrees minus theta, that means these two angles are complementary. Okay, if you think about your unit circle, the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of 60. All right, y'all already know that. Okay, and because you already know that, 60 and 30 are complementary angles. So I could also say that, you know, I could go over here and say, okay, the cosine of 10 is equal to the sine of 70. That's what these allow you to do. Okay. How's this going to help you remember that? All you have to do is go horizontal on it. 
Sine and cosine are co cofunction identities. Tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. Secant and cosecant are cofunctions. That's what this is telling you right here. So again, if you can remember how they're related on that circle, then you're going to know how things um, is going to be easy to remember them. Okay. All right. And last group here, um, there's no uh, cofunction. I mean, there's no, it doesn't apply on the superhexagon. However, um, I highlighted these two because even in odd, again, you can go to your unit circle, all right, and think about it. If you look at the sine of negative 45 degrees on your unit circle, that is equal to the negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, if you find the sine of 45, it's the square root of 2 over 2. There's a negative in front of it. So that's how these are related to each other. So the cosine, on the other hand, if you look at the cosine of negative 45 degrees, that is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, which is the same thing as the cosine. So on your even and odd functions, if you have a negative theta, okay, with the cosine and its reciprocal, the negative doesn't matter. But on all the other ones, the negative has to go out front, okay, in each of those. So think about that. Practice as you go through, we're going to go do some examples. So first off, simplifying expressions. So what your goal in these problems, y'all, when you're simplifying expressions, is to get it down to one trig function and make sure that you don't have any fractions whatsoever. All right, so in this first one, I'm down just a little bit more, okay? Cotangent squared theta plus one. Ding, 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 ding. That's a squared with a theta, I mean, with square, squared with a sum, that's a Pythagorean identity. So if you go up to your Pythagorean identities, I think if I put this back here, I did. All right, remember our Pythagorean identities? Cotangent squared, one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So this is just cosecant squared, but we've simplified it to one trig function. All right, look at B, sine of pi over two minus theta times the secant of theta. Well, the sine of pi over 2, that's my co-function. All right, my co-functions, sine and cosine are co-functions. So that means this right here is equal to the cosine of theta. And then I'm going to carry down my secant. And if you want to write secant as 1 over cosine, you can do that. But you also know that anything across from each other, when you multiply them, you get 1. So this simplifies to 1 because they're reciprocals of each other. All right, look at this next one. Secant over sine, secant theta over sine theta times one minus cosine squared. So um, a lot of times, y'all, if you have any trouble, especially if there's not really any squares in there, um, change it to sine and cosine. So secant is equal to one over the cosine. Well, my sine is in the bottom, so it has to stay in the bottom. So that became one over cosine times the sine 1 minus cosine squared, ding, 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 ding. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Then I can go the opposite direction. 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. And you can do that in any of these. So this is equal to sine squared. And when I have fractions, y'all, I always like to put it over 1 because it just helps me see, remember that this is in the numerator. So I have a sine here and I have two of them here. So I'm left with sine of theta over cosine of theta, which simplifies to tangent of theta. All right, D, tangent squared theta times cosecant squared theta minus one, all over secant squared theta. So I'm going to, uh, it's not a straight up identity, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the tangent to sine squared over cosine squared. And then cosecant, all right, in case you can't forget, it's right here. Cosecant is 1 over the sine squared. And remember, the squares stay with it. That's what I was talking about in the very beginning. And then I have minus 1, and that's all over secant squared. Well, I think you can see I have a sine squared on top and a sine squared on bottom. So I'm left with 1 over cosine squared. Well, 1 over the cosine, what is the reciprocal of the cosine? Is secant. So that means 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. 
theta carried my minus 1 down. That is over secant squared theta. Now, you got to remember there is more than one way to do these things, y'all. And it's all about what do you see and how you can do it. So um, one of the ways to help you get started is after watching the video, see if you can go do these problems all again by yourself. However, so what I'm trying to show you this, the way I'm fixing to do this, not necessarily the way I would always do it, but I want to show you this possibility because it is used a lot in these problems. So because I have just one term in the bottom, I can separate this and write secant squared over secant squared minus one over secant squared. It's like breaking up a fraction. Well, what's secant squared over secant squared? That's one. And one over secant squared is what I have. So that was secant squared over secant squared minus one over secant squared. Well, what's one over secant squared? That, of course, is cosine squared. And one minus cosine squared, ding, 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 back up here, one minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So my answer is this whole thing simplifies to the sine squared. So, <clears throat> all right, another method. That was just straight up simplifying. Now we're going to talk about factoring to simplify. Okay, so when I factor to simplify, I'm looking for a common factor. So I hope that y'all can see the common factor here is cotangent squared theta. What's left? When I take cotangent squared theta out of that, I'm left with 1 minus, take a cotangent squared out, I'm left with cosine squared. So my, where is it? There it is right there. Okay, I brought that down just to help us remember. So cotangent squared, um, because this is in terms of cosine, I'm going to write cotangent as cosine squared over sine squared. So that's what that is. And 1 minus 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So that's going to be sine squared, and I always put it over 1. Ah, and guess what I have here? So I have a sine squared on the top, a sine squared on the bottom, and that simplifies to cosine squared. That's all we got. All right, B, again, factoring to simplify. So it's just one of the ways to simplify the different methods. I've got a common factor of the secant of theta. When I take a secant out of here, I have tangent squared theta. When I take a secant out of this term, I'm left with 1. And remember, y'all, if I have two terms to start with, when I factor something out, I have to have two terms inside here. I see a squared plus 1, ding, 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 ding. So I'm going to the shaded triangle. Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So I carry down my secant theta. This gets replaced by secant squared, and I have secant cubed of theta. All right. Simplifying fractions. Oh, I think I want to, no, I'll, I'll put another one up here. All right, so simplifying fractions. If you know how to work with fractions, you won't have any trouble with this. All right, so going down here, um, I've got cosine squared minus cotangent squared. I'm going to go back to my super hexagon, and I'm going to look at the one that has cosecant. So remember, you always start, that's why these arrows are here, 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. But if I start down here, cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is equal to 1. So that means the top of this fraction is equal to 1. 1 minus cosine squared, we've done that a lot. 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. So that's simplified. Looks a lot cleaner. All right, look at this next one. I didn't write a step, and I should have written a step. But if you look at this, y'all, please tell me you remember that you cannot subtract fractions if they do not have the same denominator. So that means i got to multiply this one by 1 plus sine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. And this one has to be multiplied by 1 minus sine of theta over 1 minus sine of theta, okay? So when I multiply cosine times 1, I get cosine, cosine theta. When I multiply cosine times sine, I get cosine theta, sine theta, or sine theta, it doesn't matter. All right, now cosine times 1 is going to be minus, cos minus, uh, yeah, good, good point. So this here, 
This is why I do this. This minus, y'all, has to go to the whole numerator. So when you have this, you want to put parentheses around it to remember. So now cosine times 1 is cosine theta. Cosine times sine is minus cosine theta sine theta. What's on the bottom? You don't have to multiply it out. However, I'm going to try to simplify it, and um, I'm going to this time. Because 1 plus sine times 1 minus sine, y'all, we're going back to, oops, let me get that a little skinnier. Takes up too much room there. All right. A plus B times A minus B. I think I've told you we're going to use that a lot this year. What does that equal? A squared minus B squared. So 1 plus sine times 1 minus sine is 1 minus sine squared. Because you square the first one, you square the last one, it's always a minus. So now when I'm looking at this, y'all, I've got to distribute this right here, right? That negative and distribute it to this one. And so that means that I'm going to have a cosine minus a cosine, but that's going to be this plus that. So I'm going to have two of them, two sine theta, cosine theta. And on the bottom, one minus sine squared equals cosine squared. So on the bottom, I have cosine squared. And now I have a cosine on the top, and I had two on the bottom, but now I only have one. So I'm left with two times the sine over the cosine. Well, sine over the cosine is tangent. So that's two times the tangent of theta. Two's in my numerator. Okay? All right. I think this is the last one. It is the last one. All right. So cosine theta over secant theta minus tangent theta. There are no squares in here. So if there are no squares in here, then I'm going to change everything to sine and cosine to simplify. So cosine is there. Cosine of theta is what I have on top. Secant of theta is 1 over, remember, our reciprocals. So it's 1 over the cosine. And tangent, tangent is sine over cosine. Y'all know that. So that's minus sine uh, theta over cosine theta. And so funny, now that I'm doing this, I would totally do it a different way, but this is the way I set it up to do it. So we're going to go with that. So if you combine these two, I hope you all see that's one minus sine theta over cosine theta. Okay. So one minus sine theta. So what this is, is a complex fraction. So how do I deal with that? Keep change flip. So I have cosine of theta times, if I flip it, this cosine is on the top and on the bottom, I have one minus sine theta. Okay, if you don't like this again, I just thought of another way of doing it so I can show that to y'all later. All right, cosine times cosine is cosine squared, and that's over one minus sine. Hmm, cosine squared. Cosine squared, if I go in the opposite direction, is, well, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So one minus cosine squared equals sine squared, or one minus sine squared equals cosine squared. So on the top, I'm going to put 1 minus sine squared. I still have 1 minus sine theta. Now, going back to what I just showed you with a plus b, a minus b, I know that this factors to 1 plus sine over 1, 1 plus sine times 1 minus sine. Order doesn't matter. Over 1 minus sine. And I have the same thing on the top and the bottom. And so that gives me 1 plus the sine of theta. All right? So that's all I have. Like I said, if you want to, um, what I think is a shorter way of doing this, like I said, it just came to me. Um, I'm happy to show it to you next time we see each other. Um, but I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And y'all have a great day. Please don't hesitate to email me or come see me if you have any questions.